Off the eastern coast of the Philippines is an underwater canyon so deep that you could hide Mount Everest in it with more than 3,000 meters to spare. In perpetual darkness and faced with incredible pressure, it's easy to imagine that the Mariana Trench is one of the most inhospitable places on Earth. And yet, somehow life still manages to not only cling on, but flourish, forming its very own unique ecosystem. Life in the deep is by no means easy though. Some creatures, such as the dragonfish, produce their own light to attract prey, mates, or both. Others, like the hatchetfish, have evolved enormous eyes in order to try and catch as much of the scarce light down there as they can. Some creatures simply try and blend in, which normally means either becoming translucent or red, because this absorbs any blue light that's managed to make its way down to these depths. They then must also deal with the pressure and the cold, which in effect sets the fat that forms the membrane of the body's cells. If left unchecked, it will cause the membranes to crack and break. So to get around this, deep sea creatures have lots of unsaturated fats in their membranes, which helps to keep them fluid. It wasn't until relatively recently that humans could even descend to such depth. In 1960, Jacques Picard and Don Walsh used a submersible Trieste to reach a depth of 10,916 meters. They reported having seen a flatfish, though it was likely to have been a sea cucumber. They are joined by large single-celled organisms known as Formina which are a bit like a giant amoeba. Normally, these organisms produce calcium carbonate shells, but at the bottom of the Mariana Trench, where the pressure is around a thousand times greater than at the surface, calcium carbonate dissolves. This means that the organisms instead have to use proteins, organic polymers and sand with which to craft a shell. Also sharing the muddy depths are shrimps and other crustaceans known as amphiopods, the largest of which look like massive albino woodlice. With no light getting anywhere near the sea floor, the next question turns to what these organisms eat. Bacteria can survive at these depths, feeding off methane and sulfur emitted from the crust, as some organisms will feed on these. But many will rely on what is termed marine snow, or little bits of detritus that float down from the surface. The most extreme example of this, and a massive boon for all the creatures living at depth, is a whale fall. And to list off some of the other wonderful creatures that can be found in the deepest parts of the ocean, we have the blobfish known as the ugliest fish in the ocean when looked at at surface level, but down in its natural environment, it looks quite normal. Goblin sharks, which are so deep, very few specimens have been found for research, so we still know very little about them. Black sea devils, which are alien-like anglerfish with a bioluminescent lure to attract prey. Dragonfish, which have dozens of fang-like teeth sharper than those of piranha. And snailfish, the deepest living fish in the Mariana Trench, were found only in 2014. But scientists think that this might be the limit at which fish can survive. But while supporting some large organisms, the deepest depths are really dominated by bacteria, able to survive in the boiling hot pools of Yellowstone and the sulfur-rich springs of the Danakil Depression. It might therefore come as no surprise to find them thriving close to 11,000 metres or 36,000 feet below the ocean's surface. <laughs>